I had no idea how much things really could change in such a short amount of time. The polycythemia has been playing up a little bit. My symptoms have been developing. Next up was a bone marrow biopsy. Thursday, I find out if I have primary polycythemia or secondary polycythemia. I'm at the stage where I'm hoping for the best, but I'm prepared for the worst. And you know, Thursday could change everything. So basically what, what the bone marrow shows is basically just, just features consistent with a myeloproliferative disease. So the, the bone marrow cellularity was quite active. There was um, the, the cells that make the platelets in your bone marrow were sort of fairly proliferative. There was like a lot of them. Okay. Um, and those are features consistent with this condition called polycythemia vera. So okay. um, that, that condition that you were assumed to have. Certainly the bone marrow looks like polycythemia vera. Okay. But probably in your situation, there's probably some unusual genetic cause of it rather than the usual JAK2 thing that we, we, we usually look for. I mean, one one thing we could try, um, which might be helpful, um, is a medication called hydroxycarbamide. Okay. Um, which is a medication that basically sort of suppresses the bone marrow okay. um, and can reduce some of the activity within the bone marrow and sometimes that can be quite helpful. It can be helpful for that sort of bony pain that reduces the activity of the bone marrow. Okay. It brings a platelet count down as well and the red cell count down a little bit as well so we can give that a go. Look at my face. It's so puffy. I did not sleep last night. Maybe an hour. Broken up. Everything hurts. And my brain is so foggy and I haven't even started taking the medication yet. That's only going to make it worse. Hello. 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 Hi. How are you doing? I'm okay. You good? I'm okay, yeah. How's the back? It's, it's good. It's, okay? it's back to normal. I didn't bruise you know, or anything. Did I punish you too much? No, you were really, no. you were really what was I? You Did you take photos for me like you oh. said? <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> I didn't. You didn't. I didn't take any photos. Oh, um, I wanted to see it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Look, young people, it's so much easier to do a bone marrow than a young person. Is it? Yeah. For a start, you're not big. So, again, it's a bone that's easy. <laughs> Secondly, Young bones are, uh, are nice and firm and easy and to easy. sort of get out of. Yeah. I have, you know, most of the marrows I do are on crumbly, you know, 80 year old, and the bone tends to be quite mushy. And he used the word myeloproliferative a lot, but he wouldn't tell me what that meant. Um, so, so you're not sure. He he put me on hydroxycarbamide. Yep. He didn't tell me what that was. Yeah. When I went to the pharmacist, they gave me like five pages of information, and. It kind of freaked me out, so I, I did. I did kind of research of my own, and I just wanted to clarify. Okay, it. so so your bone marrow didn't show any progression to anything else. Yeah. Okay, so what I mean by this, polycythemia, which we know is what we've got. Yeah. The broad that comes from the broad heading of a myeloproliferative. But it's the most common one. Yeah. Right? So yeah. we call it a myeloproliferative neoplasm. Yeah. yeah. But. Don't get put off by that. Well, all that means is that you do, polycythemia always fit into that category. Yeah. Okay. Now we call it neoplasmic because there's always a slight risk with polycythemia where it, that it can go on to do things like myelofibrosis yeah. or extremely rarely leukemia. Yeah, I saw okay. that on the report. Okay, I guess so. That is, that is why it's all under that broad heading of myeloproliferative yeah. conditions from polycythemia, central fibrosis, central thrombocytosis. Myelofibrosis, all the way through to it. So what we obviously make make sure is, is that we just follow you up real 
that we can. So and we see you often enough okay. that we do. And we, if, if things come up on your full blood count, mm -hmm. and that gives us triggers to go, ah, oh, what's going on here? Okay. Okay. Now, so honestly, people go many, 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 many years straight polycythemia without doing anything. Okay. Okay. But we've got to keep the plus on. Them. Okay. Right. So I, don't, I don't want to freak out, but it's also that's the reality of what it's like. Now, the hydria is something that we use to, it does a couple of things, hydria. Hydria, now you'll see when you look at it, you know, it'll be, you'll see the little heading chemotherapy agent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yes, it is used for chemotherapy, but it's also used predominantly for polycythemia, okay. and particularly essential thrombocytosis. Essential thrombocytosis just means too many platelets. So what we're doing with that hydria is that that just controls your platelets, yeah. controls your white cell count, and it reduces the risk of you transforming to myelofibrosis. Okay. Okay, so that's why you're on that. Okay. Most people tolerate hydria really well. Okay, some people get mouth holes and skin rashes, blah, 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 but most people tolerate it really well. Just see how you go with it. Take your time with your reading with it, mm -hmm. and make sure you getting good reading as in proper... Yeah, I'm not looking on like Wikipedia no, no. <laughs> where anybody can just go on there. <laughs> so, just make sure, okay? We will always keep a close eye on your on your blood counts okay. to make sure that nothing's happening. Okay. okay? So oh, that's right. the great thing about peripheral blood counts. It, it means I don't have to go and do marriage every two weeks. <laughs> you know, is it, we, is it we pick up things early on, on the peripheral blood so we can okay. see if something's going on there. Okay. okay, so it's really important that you keep in the system with all this to make sure you have that. Well, I mean, I have been for like I know, I've been, been, I've been you, really you good. You have been really good. I've been good, I've been, been behaving. You've been, you've been great, I must say. <laughs>
It can occur at any age, but polycythemia vera usually occurs in patients over the age of 55. It is rare in children and young adults. It occurs more commonly in males than in females. Polycythemia vera can be diagnosed using a variety of methods. A full blood count, JAK2 mutation testing, bone marrow biopsy, and other tests such as x-rays and CT scans. There is no cure for polycythemia vera. It can be managed. The goal of treatment for polycythemia vera is to reduce the number of cells in your blood and help to maintain a normal blood count. This helps control any symptoms of your disease and reduces the risk of complications due to blood clotting or bleeding. A common treatment is venesection or plumbotomy, which I have done videos about previously if you would like to go check them out. Prognosis. A prognosis is an estimate of the likely course of a disease. It provides some guide regarding the chances of curing the disease or controlling it for a given time. The natural course of polycythemia vera can vary considerably between individuals. In many patients with treatment, the disease remains stable for long periods of time, often many years. In around 10% of all cases, polycythemia vera transforms over time into another type of myeloproliferative neoplasm called myelofibrosis and less commonly in up to 3% of cases into acute myeloid leukemia. That word that you just heard, myeloproliferative neoplasm. I'm going to explain what that means. I'm on the Leukemia Foundation again for this. They've got some really great information um, and you know that it can be trusted. When you're looking for inf information, try to stick to, I guess, credible sources, like government websites or research websites, or try to find correct medical information. Don't just go looking on like Wikipedia or like WebMD or that kind of stuff. So myeloproliferative neoplasms or MPNs. What is MPN? MPNs are cancers that start in the bone marrow where the blood cells are made. In MPN, the bone marrow makes too many of one or more types of blood cells. Red blood cells, white blood cells and or platelets. These cells change the thickness of the blood. Sometimes they don't work properly. They can also crowd the bone marrow and it can't make enough healthy blood cells. There are seven types of MPNs diagnosed using blood tests and bone marrow biopsies. How common are MPNs? MPNs are a rare group of blood cancers. Polycythemia vera is diagnosed in an estimated 250 Australians each year. Essential thrombocythemia, around 200. Myelofibrosis, an estimated 150. The rarer subtypes of MPN as a group are diagnosed in less than 50 Australians per year. Who gets MPNs? Most people with an MPN have no family history. It is more commonly diagnosed in people over the age of 50. It can rarely occur in young people and very rarely in children. What causes MPNs? The exact cause of MPNs remain unknown, but they are likely to be a number of factors involved. A mutation of a particular gene known as JAK2 is found in a large proportion of people with MPNs. The exact meaning of this mutation remains unclear, but it appears to play a role in the overproduction of blood cells seen in these disorders. The discovery of a mutation in the JAK2 gene is important because it is likely to have a significant impact on the way MPNs are diagnosed and treated. Common symptoms of MPNs include headaches, blurred vision, fatigue, weakness, dizziness, itchiness, night sweats, and raised blood pressure. Okay. Other risks of polycythemia vera in particular is an increased risk of blood clots, strokes, and heart attacks. Specific symptoms for polycythemia vera 
a feeling of pressure or fullness below the ribs on the left side, headaches, double vision or seeing dark or blind spots that come and go, itching all over the body especially after being in warm or hot water, reddened face that looks like blush or sunburn, weakness, dizziness, weight loss for no known reason. <sighs> so I have the most common type of MPN, myeloproliferative neoplasm. I have polycythemia vera. It's been a big week. I've been put on very strong new medication. I have experienced probably every possible emotion there is to feel. It was weird in a way my body just kind of knew. I, I said in the last video that I was hoping for the best but I was prepared for the worst and I was, it was, I, I just knew. I had so many people telling me like, oh think positive, think positive, like it'll be fine, you know, it's, you don't, you don't know that anything's wrong but I knew. I've known for a while. I guess I would say I want to document all of this because it's rare. It's a rare blood cancer, a rare group of blood cancers. And all the information that I've found has been very much kind of like presentations, it's not really somebody who has it that's talking to a camera, telling you how they feel, showing you what they've experienced, especially somebody who's younger, who's been diagnosed with it. I'm only 24. This wasn't meant to happen. Not right now. The bone marrow biopsy was painful, but the not knowing, but the, the, the waiting around for the doctors and the result was worse because I knew. I knew and I knew that it just wasn't in my head and I needed to see it on paper. I needed to have a doctor tell me it. I was right. Thursday did change everything. Everything changed when I heard those words. It meant that the life that I had planned for myself, I'd have to completely change it. I'd have to plan a new life around the possibility of getting worse. I'd have to plan my life around managing this disease. I'd have to plan my life around taking all sorts of medications and constantly having doctors adjust the dosages and my body being up and down, up and down at all these different levels. It meant that everything would change. I've got to think about how I do things differently now. But I don't want this to stop me from accomplishing things that I want to accomplish. I've seen a lot of people in support groups saying things like, oh, you can live a long, healthy life if it's managed and you will die with this disease rather than from it. And that is what I intend to do. Polycythemia vera will not be the death of me. I will not let it be the death of me. I will admit I've been in a very, very dark place since I heard the news. I've been in dark places before, but I think that that was the worst. I am not going to let this disease bring me down. I'm not going to let it control me. Yes, I have to do things differently and I have to make sure that I am very consistent with 
my doctor's appointments and my specialists and my treatments. I'm going to take each day as it comes. Each day is different and I'm in the process of learning how to roll with that, that it can't be planned and people in my life are just going to have to roll with it too. If I'm having a good day, I'm having a good day. If I'm having a bad day, I'm having a bad day and I'm just going to roll with it. I'm, if I've got plans with somebody or I've got work or something big is happening and I'm I am having a bad day. I'm not going to be guilted into pushing myself too hard because then that bad day will turn into a bad week or a bad couple of weeks. And I'm not going to let that happen. I was freaking out talking to my sister saying like everything I knew is, is it's all different and my life's going to be different now. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do the things that I want to do. And she told me, she said YOLO. <laughs> but, but she m was saying that you take the good days with the bad days and that's what I intend to do. <sighs> I guess I'll talk about the medication that I'm on at the moment. When I went to the pharmacy they gave me this big leaflet thing. The medication that I'm on is called Hydrea or hydroxycarbamide or hydroxyurea. Many names apparently. Hydrea is used to treat various types of cancers. Hydrea contains hydroxyurea, an anti-cancer medicine. It interferes with the replication of cells and causes cell death, particularly in cancer cells. Sorry. I've been taking this medication for a week. It has given me brain fog every day, like really bad, like really bad brain fog. It has made my nails very thin. It has made me dizzy, but those side effects are common. While my body is adjusting to it, that's what I've been told by my specialist, and that's what I'm gonna go with. One symptom that is worrying me is I've been very short of breath, especially at night and early in the morning. I've taken tests, it's not the spicy cough, it's the medication and I only started up a few days after I started taking the medication. If you're out there going through something similar, or you know somebody who is, I just hope that this video makes you feel a little less alone and I hope that it gives you some good, credible resources that you can go look at and I guess find the information that you need to find. Of course, speaking to your doctor is always the best bet. If you're a younger patient with this, it's important that you get the information that you need. I think that some doctors don't want to give you too much in the beginning because you're younger and it's rare for this to happen to younger people and they tend to get a bit funny about it in my experience so if you're a younger person going through something similar you're gonna need to push you're gonna need to do your research and have questions take it to your appointment be like this is the information it's good information it's credible information go through it with me yes I'm young but I have a right to know. It just cut me off. Anyway, I was saying, if you're a younger person, take all the information that you've got to your doctor. A list of questions helps too. It'd be like, look, I'm young, yes, but I have a right to know. It's my body and my health and it's happening to me and I want to be as informed as I possibly can about it. Yeah, I, I, don't, re I don't really know where to go from here, but I, I guess, I'll record updates, anything new, any new medications or side effects or yeah there's not many people making videos about this stuff so I'd like to try to bring some light to this group of disorders and inform people. Anyway, 
um, you can see these flowers here. A co-worker just dropped them off before I pulled the camera out. They are the best team of people I've ever worked with. They got me a little box of chocolates too on a card. It was very sweet and I'm very appreciative. Alright guys, I guess that is all for this video. I really do hope that it helped. I hope that it gave you some information that you needed if you're going through something similar or even just taught you a little something about this group of MPNs. Yeah, I, that's all from me for now. I guess that I will see you guys in the next video, whenever that may be, whatever that may be about. I'm not too sure yet. I've got a lot to figure out. After all, it's only been a week. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.